Hollywood Unlocks and we're here. We have a very special group in the building. It is the Grammy Award winning R&B soul group 112. How are we doing tonight, fellas? Great, great, great. 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 How are you doing? I'm doing right. well, I'm doing well. I feel very blessed, very honored to be in a group or be in a room with a prestigious group such as you guys. Like, I grew up on you guys. I'm sure you're here all the time, but I'm just like, listen, this is truly an honor. It's been 12 years since we've had a last album, Pleasure and Pain, right. 2005. Yes. What brought back the comeback? Why is now the perfect time? Well, we have been officially like off the scene for 12 years, but we were still kind of touring, doing doing a lot of shows all over the world. So just being on the road and being around each other, singing and kind of getting that vibe. And aside from that, listening to the fans, the fans were demanding it. You know, we want to hear you guys some some new music from you guys. So I mean, just between us catching the vibe and the fans demanding it, we felt like the time was right. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, honestly. And you do bring up a good point because during your 12 year hiatus, you guys weren't not just sitting at home, not doing anything. Right. You guys are writing, you guys are producing other people. You guys have tons of credits, production credits and writing credits. Give us a little bit of a background for those who don't know who you've worked with, what songs you've produced, what songs you've helped co-write or written. Well, um, most of our own music we write and produce ourselves and stuff like that. So, but as far as other artists, uh, Keisha Cole, Kelly Price, Jamie Foxx, um, The Notorious B.I.G. featuring R. Kelly, uh, just to name a few. <laughs> He's like, just a little bit. <laughs> All big names. <laughs> so, uh, going off of that, you guys have, you starting out, you know, um, in the 90s, you guys were the group in the 90s into the early 2000s. Oh, the R&B, I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it, listen. You guys dominated the culture, especially R&B and soul. You know, you were the male group that dominated all the charts. Every BET playlist, Rack City, whoever, to everybody, you know, 106 and Park was playing you guys and you guys dominated. So I definitely got to give credit where it's due. But we're back now and I couldn't be more happier. So we have the sixth album, studio album. You guys just released it October 27th. Yes. It's jam packed with 15 tracks. What is the story you guys are trying to tell? It's Q, we named it Q, Mike, Slim, and Duran, correct? Right. Yes. What are we, what's the message that we're telling? The well, story? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory. We named it that way for a reason. We want everybody to feel Q, Mike, Slim, and Duran. So, you know, you definitely feel all four cats, you know what I mean? Yes. Just doing what we do best, yes. you know what I mean? So, I mean, this album is probably the most well-versed album, well, you know, well put together where all of us, you can definitely hear all of us. So it's not just one person dominating or whatever, you know. And that's actually our strength, mm. right? you know what I mean? So th this is for the culture, this is, this is what it's about now. Yes. I'm yeah. loving it, yes. yes. So I did get a chance to listen to it. It is definitely well versed. I definitely agree. You guys brought back, I love how you did it and I want to get into how you guys actually thought it out and how hard it was to actually put it together or if it wasn't but how you guys meshed together modern music and still kept that classic 90s vibe, that classic 112 vibe. And where I caught that the most was on Without You. Without You. I was like, I heard a little Cupid samples in there. You know, I was just like, yes. And it was so relevant, you know, like modern. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a couple of firsts on, on this album. You know, I think we are the first uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some analytics or some nerds out there somewhere <laughs> that's going to, you know, correct me, but I think we're the first ones to actually sample ourselves. So, you know, we were, uh, we were, we were in it for the money. We wanted those two checks. Yeah. But uh, no, you know, we, we, we wanted to, 112 has always pushed the, the envelope as far as, you know, being innovative. You know, we, we do feel like we are the pioneers of the hip hop and R&B sound. And um, anything that we do, like for example, when we did Hey Love with um, with, uh, with with Mom D, D. recipe, the recipe, right? Yeah. It, it was it was something you know that had not been seen before. These are like hip hop dudes, mm -hmm. you know. And then here you here go the gentleman of R&B, by the bing, by the boom. Yeah. And then you you know we came up with a masterpiece, and and uh, so we were you know also with the notorious B.I.G. You know, and we we were just pushing envelopes. Just pushing on below, see how far we could go, you know, in, in, uh, in R&B music because hip hop gets such a, 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 you know, they get such a long, you know, 
Now, what is the what's the phrase? Uh, Q, you know, you know, don't, don't worry about it. You know. <laughs> but, it, it but, they, but they get a they get a wide berth. You know, basically right. they, they, they they have a dead end. Yeah. Well, they're able to do pretty much whatever. But the, so one twelve felt like you know, as, as far as this album was concerned, we wanted to push the envelope as far as we could as well. And uh, we'll just try just try something, man, and just see mm-hmm. what happens. And uh, we we did we didn't go in thinking that we wanted to be like you know what's going on in today's sound. Mm-hmm. We wanted to maintain who we are. And um, that's that's what we accomplished, I think, on this album. For sure, I hear it. I do. Nice. I'm like I because I've been looking for that, and that leads into my next point is during this hiatus, do you guys feel like the genre or the lane that you guys dominated? Do you feel that it's become non-existent? Has, has it hit a dead end since you guys left? I won't say completely left the scene, but took a break. Do you guys feel that it's non-existent? And if so. Do you think that you guys are finally trying to bring it back, or do you, or do you not think that playing devil's advocate? Do you think somebody else stepped in and kind of well, involved I mean, it? We're just consistent with who we are. Uh, the one thing that I, I, I love about being in this group, uh, we're always listening to what the climate is doing, mm-hmm. uh, and we can always add to who we are with whatever el- other elements that are now the current sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so interestingly, when you mentioned your comment about us being able to stay uh, true to ourselves and stay authentic, but still add the elements of today, that's who 112 is, who we are, and that's who we've always been. Uh, there are even artists that that we like to that we like to listen to today, uh, but when it comes to us uh, producing our music and creating our own music, we are probably one of the few artists, uh, in my opinion, who are just so well versed and just so blessed that. You know, we can pretty much do anything musically. There's nothing that we can't do. Um, and we can embrace all of it and embody it. Like, we just, yes. that's just who 112 is and who we've always been. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Also, I definitely, I've taken a liking to the, the latest album. Um, I really do. I think it's definitely needed, as I'm sure you guys agree. It's definitely something we've been missing. Um, but that being said, I just want to jump around, like tour. Like, are we are we taking this on tour already? What's going on? I'm ready to see this. <laughs> There's some things in the works. We're talking about some things. You know, of course, we have a song on the album with Jagged Edge. Um, yeah. Called the Both of Us. So. Um, it's been talks of us putting together a tour with them. Nothing is concrete just right now, but okay. just be on the lookout for that. You can kind of keep up with us on our, our website, theofficial112.com, or Instagram at theofficial112, and we'll keep you posted. Okay, we definitely gonna be looking out. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right there, front row. Uh, with that being said, you guys do have jagged edge, jagged edge on there. What brought together? What decide? What made that deciding factor come to fruition? Like, were we gonna? Well, we, we, we always said that we wanted to work with them, and we always said it to each other. So I just thought that this platform right here was the best opportunity. We, we have more control. Yeah. So, you know, it was a great thing where chemistry and when both, both cats got together. Uh, Brandon and Brian spearheaded the record. We 112 fought it, jumped on it, got, got together. Boom, bada boom, bada bang. <laughs> it's both of us. Pushing that envelope. Pushing that envelope. You guys are doing it successfully, honestly. You know, it's, uh, I feel definitely in the music industry, which is one of the industries that I love. Um, growing up with music, and music is my life. But it's definitely, you know, a lot of it is trial and error, seeing what sticks, you know, and, and hoping it sticks and you don't fall 10 steps behind, you know? And I think you guys have done it successfully and, you know, definitely going forward, you know, groups. Should continue looking up to you guys. With that being said, are you guys interested in developing other groups? I know we've done solo acts. Everyone's gone solo. They've tried that, you know, um, successfully. Everyone that's is a, that something you guys? That's, would? A, that's a good question. Um, we're not, you know, we're not opposed to it, mm-hmm. you know. But um, we still have our story that we need to write. Mm-hmm. You know, our legacy is not done yet. So. Uh, once we do that, once we solidify ourselves as that quintessential R&B group, a la um, New Edition, Boys of Men, Jodeci, you know, those cats, like once you, you know, we, once 112 puts that staff on it, then I think we can start venturing out and doing those other things. But right now, gotcha. we still got a, a long way to go. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So that leads into the same with the biopic then. We're, we're still a work in progress. We're still 
Got it. Yeah, yep. Cause I'm waiting on it. It's, it's coming up. We do have a um, making of documentary. Yeah. It's just like okay. uh, chronicling all the things that uh, we've done on this process to give you the behind the scenes, in depth look of you know what it what it feels like not being in the studio uh, for 12 years, mm. uh, seeing maybe just not the difficulties, but just getting back into that mode. Like Duran said earlier, the touring aspect is just that's just who we are. We, we, we can not see each other for three weeks and go do a show tomorrow, mm. perform. Um, but going back into the studio, we just had to re had to acclimate ourselves back into that process. So uh, we created the documentary for the fans to not only love the album, but to see how it was made. So I think they're going to really enjoy that. Got it. Are we going to see, does it coincide with the Bad Boys documentary, Can't Stop, Won't Stop? With the, no? Okay. Yeah. The reason I ask is um, <laughs> like if with, as far as, um, the Bad Boy reunion tour, where we get to see the behind the scenes, because I'm sure that's what sparked you guys getting back together, getting back in the studio. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you get a little wrong. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's tap it off. No, um, actually, the the fans were the ones that that spearheaded yep. this, this project. We were cool, just you know, being a touring act at, mm. the, at, at, a, at that point. You know, okay. we, like Duran said, we have been touring. You know five years prior to us putting an album together and you know we threw the idea around a couple of times but it just wasn't right you know mm -hmm. it, it just wasn't making sense either three people was in it one wasn't or two and then the other two was like eh or one person was with it and everybody else was like nah it's, it's not going it's not going to flow um because we didn't want to jeopardize our legacy we didn't want to you know because we didn't re we honestly didn't know if there was like you said to your previous question we were really unsure at one point whether there was a lane for 112 mm -hmm. you know what i mean as far as our music and what we bring to the table and uh we, we're glad that we took the the leap of faith if you will and jumped out there and put an album together because uh, the results have been nothing but positive like i've yet to see anything negative you know on social media about this album and i might have just cursed the hell out of us right now but <laughs> no, 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 you know we you know, don't all believe in it so anyway yeah, it's positive but um uh, yeah I, I think that that's you know, we, we, we did it for the fans. You know, we did it for the fans. The fans wanted it and we, we gave it to them. I thank you for it. I'm sure they do as well. Especially once you guys go on tour and start giving us those classics, yeah, you know, yeah, mix with the new yeah. stuff. Cause that's what I'm waiting on. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I'm waiting yeah, on yeah. some any, anywhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speaking of anywhere, what's up with Zane? Y'all gonna get together again? Can we? I spoke to Zane uh, a couple of days ago. You live um, out in LA now, right? Yeah. You think yeah. so? Yeah. I think he lived out here. Right? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, we would, we, again, we wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. As long as it makes musical, as long as it makes musical sense, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll pretty much go with him. Like, anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's like. I almost lost it. I almost lost it. I'm sorry. You got it. With that being said, but you're, you're not really opposed to working with anyone. Who would you guys work with as far as like the millennials of today? Who do you guys consider working with or you've even gotten in the studio with and just waiting to, you know, dish out those new tracks? Man, it's a lot of them. I mean, oh. I can see Ty Dollar. Okay. I can see Bryce. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind us working with Ty. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't mind us working because he. Very I, 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 I heard the new album. I was just about yeah. to say, how'd you like Beachhouse Three? Oh yeah, actually, it was, it was good, amazing. Right? Hey, big shouts out to uh, Audibles and uh, Audibles and Pooh Bear for jumping down in there. And, uh, <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people. Uh, Chris Brown, Chris yeah. Brown's album is crazy. I mean, yeah, 45 songs. You know what I'm 45. Listen. Get us up to the right now sound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> so who, okay, so speaking of that then, as far as working with the Chris Brown, working with the Ty Dolla Sign, how do you guys feel about other millennials, such would you was, would you push the envelope yeah, again it, with with yeah. the new rap sound, the new I don't want to call it mumble rap, but that's what it's, the the word the phrase is kind of taking its own life. Mumble rap, <laughs> it's kind of taking its own. I don't want to call it that. I feel that it should be a subgenre of rap. I don't think it's necessarily called mumble rap. Yeah. Uh -huh. But music evolves, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, right. But could you see yourself working with the Lil Uzi, working with the Twenty One Savage, you know? Is there a <laughs> again, like, it, again, like it, again, 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 it,
you, you're doing as you said, you're staying true to yourself, you know, so you don't want to, you know, like you said, if it doesn't make sense, you can't do it. You know, the fans are, they're not, you know, if they're not going to support it, I totally get it. I totally get it. I just want to know. Like, <laughs> listen, I, I just got to know. I got to ask, I got to ask socialites. But with, the, with speaking of um, modern music, today's times, Irv Gotti recently said that he compared Drake to Eminem. I don't know if you guys have heard about it yet, but he basically said Drake is like today's Eminem. What are your thoughts on that? Do you guys, cause Drake does everything. You know, he, he's very versatile. I mean, how was, he, how was he comparing? Yeah. Like, I guess the as, context is what we- As far as like sales wise, if he- Oh, sales wise, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Like yeah. for him, yeah. he'd be like the Eminem. Yeah, I mean, sales wise, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I guess we would have to contextualize things. Like, For sure. Like, I, I, outside of sales, I, I don't know how I mean, the comparison can be made, you know, because they do totally different things. Right. You know, so, I don't know. But as far as, Which you know, is, he touched, he touched everything. everything. Yeah. Because he M touched M is considered one of the best, so, yeah. one of the greatest. So, yeah. to be in the conversation or to be mentioned, yeah. that's. Be, yeah. And it's, it's, it's not just time. about the rapping. I think it, it, it also has to do with like touching all everything from yeah. sports to like you know clothing and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. I, yeah. I, I mean, get, that's like uh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it, man. You yeah. Know, I, I would. You know. I can see that. For sure. Now you guys uh, are not just doing music, music as well. Well, I shouldn't say as far as like singing and stuff like that, but it's, uh, you have production teams and you have your own labels, sub labels. Are you guys venturing off into any other businesses other than performing, other than 112? What is each individual doing outside well, or together? Well, we, we do have those things, um, but one of the things about 112 is when we have focused our mind on what the group's missions are, that's really like what the priority is right now. So yeah, we do have things that we are doing individually, mm -hmm. but a lot of the focus right now is Q, my Slim, and Deron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just yeah. really focusing that. Again, we got that legacy that we got to, that, that still needs to be up. So with that being said, what do you guys, what do you want that message to be, that legacy to be when they think of 112, when, when you know, it's long gone, what happened, what do you guys want? people to remember 112 as individually and collectively? Um, for me, I would like for us to be known as the baddest that ever did it vocally. You know, there's, there's other groups that can dance better than 112. There's other groups that can, you know, they, I don't know. But vocally, I, uh, I've never seen anything like 112 before. Mm -hmm. Where you got four of these singers, mm -hmm. you know, in the group that was able to do it for 21 plus years. So I would love for us to go down as vocally the best group that ever did it. Yes. I'll be happy, man. I can die happy. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, it's well said. Oh, yeah. Anybody want to add? No, that was it. Yes. Listen, yeah. Yeah. no, I yeah. totally agree. <clears throat> I think 112 is, like I said, the best to ever do it. You guys dominated that lane in the 90s, in the early 2000s, and I'm all for you guys picking that torch back up and running full force again. You know, it's 2017, it's been 12 years since the last album, and I'm sure this sixth album is gonna skyrocket. And I'm sure, you know, everyone watching this interview, please, please, please listen to it because it is amazing. It's definitely yes. given us that dose of music, that R&B, soul, everything. You guys even do gospel. You know, you guys have that sound that just trailblazes. I'm like, it, it's indescribable, honestly. And I think, I think, you know, this album is so transparent. It's definitely what we've needed. It's eye opening. I can go on and on and on and on. I like that word. That is the mission to make sure that everybody that loves us or discovers us can talk about us in the same way that you just explained. Um, and if that isn't, if there's somebody that can't do that, then that means we still have more work to do. Exactly. Yeah. Please. Please don't stop. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Honestly, like those 12 years were hard, and I know you guys are back <laughs> and better. Oh, Listen, yeah. I don't mean to keep harping on it, but I'm just happy you're back. Yeah, That's no, all I'm gonna say. No, That's all I'm gonna say. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys stopping. I know you guys want to Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
What's up, y'all? I'm Q. This is Mike. Slim here. And this is The Run. And, and we're, we're my 12. 12. And we're giving you the keys to Hollywood Unlocked. Yes, sir.